Hey everyone, this is Rick from In Front of IT. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over the installation of Docker and how to run it on CentOS, one of the most popular Linux distributions. Docker has revolutionized the way software is deployed, ported, and managed, providing a lightweight and portable environment for applications. With Docker, you can wrap your application and its dependencies into a single package that they call a container, making it easy to distribute and run consistently across different environments and platforms. CentOS is a free and open source operating system, now owned by Red Hat, and is known for its stability, long-term support, and full binary compatibility with Rout, which is commonly used in production environments, primarily in the United States. It provides a solid foundation for running Docker, enabling you to leverage the benefits of both technologies to enhance your development and deployment workflows. Whether you're a developer, a systems administrator, or someone curious about containerization, this guide will walk you through the steps to get Docker up and running on CentOS. So we're gonna cover the installation of Docker on CentOS including pulling and running a test Docker image to verify that it works. And as always, I'll explain each step in detail so that it's easy to follow and reproduce on your own system. But let's not delay anymore. Let's get in front of it. first thing we're going to do is update the system. It's always a good idea before installing any new tools and services to update the system and do a reboot if you can in order to make sure that there's no unforeseen issues when you install that tool. In CentOS we do that by running the command sudo yum list updates. And we're going to do that here. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and check the repos for any updated packages. And in this case, the system's already updated, so there's nothing to do here. Now, if we did have to do an update, it would show what packages needs updates and then after running that yum list updates command, you would follow that with a sudo yum upgrade command. Now that we completed the updates, the first step we're going to do is remove any old versions of Docker. Most likely it won't be installed, but this is just a precaution as we don't want to have any type of conflicts with the install that we're going to be doing, which is Docker community edition, Docker CE. We do this by typing the command sudo yum remove docker space docker dash engine. And by the way, all of these steps to install docker on CentOS will be in the description. So as you can see, once we run the command, these packages are not installed, so there's nothing to remove. So we're good to go to the next step. Now, docker community edition is not part of the standard repositories that are included with CentOS. So if you try to in install it doing a yum install Docker CE or anything of that nature, you're not going to find it. So the next step we're going to have to do is add the Docker repository to the yum configuration. And we do that with two commands this time. The first command is going to install yum utils. And one of the utilities that's part of that package is what we're going to use to install the actual Docker repository. So we install yum utils with sudo yum install dash y yum utils. Now the dash y is just used as an automatic yes. When you want to install a package with yum, it's going to ask you, are you sure? To skip that, are you sure message, you add a dash Y to the command. Once yum utils is installed, we're then going to use the command yum config manager 
which actually adds the repo. And we're gonna type it in just as you see on the screen. Now you may or may not get this message here that I highlighted about the system not being registered with an entitlement server. An entitlement server would be a server, what they call Red Hat Satellite, or in the case of CentOS, it used to be called Spacewalk. I'm not sure if they still use it. But that's basically a centralized package manager, very similar to WSUS uh, that can be used on the Windows side or SCCM. But now we can ignore that message. It's not gonna affect the installation of, of Docker at all or any of the packages that we need. And once that command is complete, you don't have to do this step, but I'm just doing it just to verify that it's actually finding the package. I did a sudo yum list docker ce. And as you can see there, it's showing that the package is available, not yet installed, and it's showing the version. So with that, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to actually install Docker itself. Okay, it's time to install Docker. And we're gonna do this with one command that you're gonna see on the screen. It's gonna be sudo yum install and docker-ce and a few other packages that are needed to fully run Docker. Most of the packages are dependencies for Docker Community Edition, but there are a couple that I want to focus on and explain what they do. So the first one is docker-ce, which is the Docker package itself. Then you have docker-ce-cli, that is the command line interface. CLI typically stands for command line interface for any type of packages or tools that you might install. So you might come across it again in the future. And then you have the last package on the list, Docker Compose plugin. Now that installs Docker Compose, which is used to create application stacks in Docker that can be used, for example, if you have a LAMP stack, which would be Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, which is commonly used for WordPress, for example. So you can create a YAML file that Docker Compose uses. At the end of the video, I have a link to another video where I go into detail on how Docker Compose works. Let's go ahead and run this command. Running a command lists the packages that's going to install and any additional dependencies that you didn't have listed in your yum install command. And then it's going to prompt you whether this is okay to move forward with or not. After you type a Y, it'll then download the packages and then it's doing something interesting. It's actually trying to import the security key for the repo. Now this is because we just added the repo, but this is the first time we're actually installing packages from it. So it needs you to confirm that this security key is okay. We're gonna go ahead and type Y, and then it's gonna continue installing the packages. Once it's installed, I'm gonna go ahead and run a command just to verify that the actual Docker service is there and working correctly. I'm doing that by typing in sudo system control, which is system CTL status Docker. Once you type that in, you get a return of, as you would expect, the status of the Docker service. And you can see that it's loaded, but it's currently disabled, which means that the service isn't running right now and it's not set to run at boot time. And you can see again, where it says next to active, that it's inactive. That means the service is installed, but it's not running. So at this point, we're ready to go to the next step. In this step, we need to do two things. We have to start the Docker service and we have to enable the Docker service so that when you reboot the system, it will automatically start and run. And luckily, because Linux is so great, 
we can do both of those with one command. And the command is sudo system control on system CTL, enable docker dash dash now. So a little explanation around this command. System CTL is the system controller command. Start, stop services, see the status of services, install them, remove them, etc. Enable is the command you use when you want the service to start up automatically when the system boots. If we had used system CTL start Docker, that would have started the service, but not enable it. And if we just use enable Docker, that would enable the service, but not start it. So we also start the service with the dash dash now command. So that whole command will enable the service to start on boot up and start it now. So let's go ahead and run that. Once you run the command, you see the output saying that it successfully created the sim link, which is what is used to start the service on boot up. Now just to verify that the service is running, we're going to run the command I mentioned before, sudo systemctl status docker. And as we can see from the output, the service is enabled and it's running. And when you run status, you'll see below some of the status messages that the service put into the system log. Now that we know that the Docker service is running, let's try to connect to it and see if we can get some information about it. So we're going to run the Docker info command. And when you run Docker info, you see the version, you see that it's the community edition and the client line. And you also see near the bottom that you get an error stating that permission is denied when you try to connect to the Docker daemon socket. Now this makes sense because by default, when Docker is installed, only the root user has access to connect to it. The root user and the Docker group. And currently I'm running under the user coach, not root. So I am not able to connect to Docker with the coach user. But it's kind of inconvenient to have to type sudo every time you run a Docker command, especially in a dev or test environment system. So we're going to fix that with the next step. As I mentioned, the only accounts that have access to Docker by default are the root user that has access to everything and the Docker group. So to solve this issue, and give coach access to Docker, we're gonna add the coach user to the Docker user group. And the command to do that is pretty straightforward. It's sudo user mod for modify user dash A capital G. The A is for add and the G is for user group. And then Docker, which is the user group we wanna add the user to, and then we end it with the user. Now I have dollar sign user in the command, which references an environment variable, which is currently pointing to coach. But you could just as easily just type in the username there if you want. When we run the command, it's gonna ask for your password since we're using sudo, and that's not gonna respond with anything, which means it worked. And just to verify that it worked, I'm gonna type cat etsy slash group. And that command just prints out the group file, which is a list of the groups and members of each group. As you can see on the bottom, it has the Docker user group. And after the 977, which is the group ID, it shows coach, which means that now my account is a member of the Docker group. But that's not going to work by default. It doesn't take effect right away. In the case of CentOS, or at least in my testing, I had to reboot the system. So at a minimum, you'd want to log off the system and log back on with the user account for the group membership to take effect. But that didn't work for me. I had to reboot. So your mileage may vary. But if it doesn't work with log off and log on, go ahead and reboot the system. And that definitely works. So let's go ahead and restart the system. And then we'll be ready for the last step. So the last step is just to test Docker after the reboot and just verify that it works. And we're gonna be doing that with a couple of commands. 
the first command we're going to use is docker info and this time we're going to run it without the sudo in front of it to verify that the coach account that i'm using has access to docker the second command we're going to use is docker run hello world the docker run hello world command tests the full functionality of docker it pulls down the hello world container and executes it and shows an output saying that you've successfully run docker so it's a pretty comprehensive test to at least verify that you have docker installed and running correctly let's start off with the docker info command and as you can see running docker info shows the full information that we couldn't get before when we ran it before without sudo we were getting a permission denied error on the server output from the docker command now we're getting the full output and all the information related to docker this verifies that Docker is now accessible to the coach user that I'm using. And we no longer have to use sudo to run it. So adding coach to the Docker user group worked. Next up, we're gonna run the Docker run hello world command, which I have to correct. It's Docker run hello dash world, not Docker run hello space world. So I'm gonna go ahead and correct that here. And then we're gonna run it. And running that command, the first message you see is an unable to find image hello dash world colon latest locally, which makes sense because this is the first time we're running any container in Docker since we installed it. So it wouldn't have any container images locally. So it's going to go ahead and pull that from the Docker hub repo. And once it does that, then it runs the output of the, of the container which you see there, hello from Docker, and so on and so forth. This verifies that Docker is running correctly. There's a couple of commands you could run to see the status of containers that are both running, as well as another command that will show you the status of containers, whether they are running or not. The first command is Docker PS. And when we run that command, we don't see anything. And what that means is that this container we just ran, because we know it runs successfully by seeing that message, has actually stopped. So the container ran and then it stopped, which is what it's supposed to do. The next command that we run is docker ps-a. And this command shows all the containers installed in Docker, whether they're running or not. This is the way I typically use the docker ps command. I just always add an dash a to it. And as we can see here, it has a container with a container ID that's assigned by Docker. The image, which is what we ran, hello dash world. And then it shows the command. And it also shows how long ago the container was run, and what the status is. And with that, we have a successful installation of Docker on CentOS. If this video helped you out, please like and subscribe and enable notifications so you can see more videos like this one. This is Rick from In Front of IT, signing off.